joining us now is OG Akpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, OG. Good morning, Dr. Abati. We How missed you? you yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you here. You, you both are matching. Again, you look excellent in your <laughs> suit, you. really. Good morning, Tindu. Morning, How are OG. you? I'm great, thank you. How are great. you? Great. I'm doing well. Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Hi, OG. Hi. Great to have you. How are you doing? Hope you're doing better. Yes, I am. Thank you. Well, good morning to you, viewers. We begin what's trending with global tributes that have been pouring in for the late football legend Diego Maradona, who's died at the age of 60 after suffering a heart attack at his Buenos Aires home in Argentina. Maradona was captain when Argentina won the 1986 World Cup, scoring the famous Hand of God goal against England in the quarterfinals. Argentina's president, Alberto Fernandez, has declared three days of national mourning. He said Maradona took the country to the top of the world and has described him as the greatest of them all. Argentina and Barcelona forward Lionel Messi described him as eternal, while Juventus and Portugal forward Cristiano Ronaldo says Maradona was an unparalleled magician. In Brazil, football legend Pele wrote on Twitter, I lost a great friend and the world lost the legend. Let's take a quick look at Maradona's top five World Cup goals before we take more tributes. legend of Maradona. I mean, you know, the president of um, Argentina said that he has made everyone so happy in Argentina. But I don't think it's just Argentina. I think it's completely global. He's so magical on, on, his, on the field. And right now in Argentina at the Mar Diego Maradona Stadium, fans have trooped in to pay respect to this legend. I'll take a tweet from um, boxing legend Mike Tyson, who wrote... The hand of God, Maradona has left us. In 86, we both won our championships. He used to compare the two of us. He was one of my heroes and a friend. I respected him so much. He will be greatly missed. Tundun, we've discussed this at length. Yes, we have. Yes. This is sad because he was so young. Yes. And I think the timing of it is particularly poignant. I'm a big believer in the power of redemption. With his history of drug and alcohol abuse, it's sad for me that it was just an, another time when he was attempting rehab that he was taken away. Time ran out for him to sort of retrace his steps in that way, which is, is sad. But what is going on with 2020? I know. January, Kobe Bryant, and now we're ending the year with the passing of another legend. Yes. And he died on the same day as George Best who is one of, another one of the greatest footballers the world has ever seen. Yes. Sad. What a sad moment. Well, I made the point earlier that if you are drawing up uh, the list of uh, greats, football greats, you probably draw up up to about 50. Um, Argentina has given us uh, Diego Maradona. Uh, Brazil has given us uh, Pelé. Pelé, yes. Uh, when you talk about Nigeria, well, I don't know who you would choose. 
It depends There's on. There's a bunch of them. You know where you look at it from. Canon Wang Kuo, I yeah, love. Well, you know, uh, so you find the lesson of it is that you find that when people do well in their chosen field, be it athletics, uh, sports, or academic work, or medicine, and they achieve on the world stage, they become icons for their countries. They become, uh, you know, at a time in Europe, they used to talk about national poets. And people used to say, oh, what will France be without, mm -hmm. you know, the poet? Uh, what would uh, Italy be without this person? So that's, uh, you know, how people with their individual achievement becomes part of the brand and the tradition of a particular country. And in his own case, yes, truly, he was a, an artist on the field of play. He was a genius, at least during the, uh, the uh, bright moments of his career, uh, before he eventually began to have problems with cocaine addiction and alcohol addiction. And I think that on the bright side, that's something that we can take away. How do other individuals in their chosen fields become so distinguished, as if so, so much that your own brand becomes almost synonymous with the brand of your country. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and so that when they mention the name of your country, the first thing that comes to uh, the uh, uh, mind of an outsider is that, oh, okay, that's Maradona's that's Maradona country. Yes. Oh, that's Walisha Yikar's country. Yes. That is how, you know, achievers, geniuses connect. But again, there's nothing uh, that we have learned that tells us uh, that achievers, geniuses, must be perfect human beings. Mm -hmm. Because I made the point earlier that he was a flawed hero. He was, in fact, in many regards, uh, in his later lives and what happened in the course of his career, an anti-hero. And that's the other side of the lesson that we need to learn. And that was why I was cautioning against Sakalintias, mm. you know, uh, extremely sentimental appraiser of people who may have made a mark, an impact on the a global public imagination. Yes, I want to take your word genius because that's the only way I can ever remember him. I don't want to remember him any other way. No, we, we must I be balanced you, yes, in our but assessment. For me, that's my point. Before I come to you, Rufai, I'd love for us to take a quick look at his pre-match game. That video went on to show how he'd balanced the ball on his head for several minutes. Rufai, your take on Maradona. It's because of that video, they call him his nickname, the Puesa, which means the fluff. Yeah. You know, he does all the fluffy stuff. Uh, very creative footballer, great, great footballer. Uh, a lot of people don't know the genius of this man. For over 50 years, there was a dichotomy in Italy. It's normally the teams in the north of Italy that win the league, the teams like AC Milan and, and the likes. But he came to the south, he came to Napoli, Naples, and um, he won the league for them. And the day he came, over, over 80,000 fans of Napoli came to the stadium that day. And they say, we know you're going to win us the league, Maradona. And he did win the league. So, so that's the greatness of the man. But, you know, he's got other sides to him. Uh, it's a great point Tundu raised about the fact that uh, he died on the same day with George Best. Two very great players, but they had a problem with alcohol. George Best on his dying bed, after he had lost his liver to excessive alcoholism, did beg the world not to die like him. And I'm sure Maradona constantly fought his own demons that bedeviled him all his life. Drugs and alcoholism. Let's not forget his last game in the World Cup was against Nigeria when he was tested positive for epinephrine. You know, and afterwards he was suspended and sent out of the World Cup and things like that. Uh, but, but that's just to show you that this man battled his own demons. Yeah, we should learn lessons from that. Yes. But most importantly, let's not forget his genius. I'll never forget the game against Nigeria. 
you know, him laying that pass for Kanija and Kanija going ahead to score and things like that. And it just shows you the impact this man has made in Argentine football. A lot of people love him so much. And he was really popular. I think an international uh, ma image management uh, company, IMG, did do a survey at a point, and they discovered that he was one of the most popular men in the world mm. at that point in time. And that's why he got all the big accolades and got all the big deals. He got television deal. I mean, he was at, at a point on television, he was earning $250,000 per month for doing a TV gig. So it was quite popular. Everybody wanted to meet him, and he was a tall miss, you know, uh, for the Argentines. Uh, Brazil had Pelé, uh, Argentina had Maradona, Nigeria probably, you know, I, 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 maybe JJ Ococha or Kanu Wanku and the likes. Uh, you, you know, but one, one thing that is certain about this man's life that he has come, he has seen it, he has conquered in his own will. Uh, so is it safe to say Veni Vidi Vici uh, for Diego Armando Maradona? Because I know generations yet unborn will always talk about Maradona. Right. A generation yet unborn will always talk about the man that avenged the loss of the Falkland Wars for Argentina on the football pitch. He didn't carry a gun, <laughs> but he did something very harmful to the British they'll never forget. Yes, so right. so painful you're that right. a man that only his height was 1.65 meters, <laughs> he jumped higher than a Peter Shilton, the goalkeeper, that his height was 1.85 meters to score the hand of God goal. All right. I hope Maybe. we are not promoting cheating. <laughs> Maybe no, we are not. Uh, Look yeah. at yeah, that. If a man cheated, he cheated. <laughs> if, if there was VAR then, that would not have happened. Well, may he rest in perfect peace. Amen. Yeah, amen. We'll take another story. A video of a woman lamenting about the treatment of mothers left abandoned at Lagos Teaching Hospital here in Nigeria is making the rounds on social media. In the video, the woman claimed that a lodge had been provided for the mothers but was in a deplorable state. And as at the time she was recording the video, Hospital staff had kicked out the mothers from the hospital without prior notice. Let's take a look. I'd like to show you the living condition of mothers who have babies, who have neonates in loose. This is where people sleep. Now they made available a lodge. The lodge is not good enough. The lodge is in terrible and poor state. And as of this morning, mothers were thrown out without prior notice, without anything. So we're going to post this. This is the reason why I want this to go viral as much as possible. Repost, tag, anybody you know. It just shows that the common man in Nigeria cannot get good health care. Why then are we spending so much money? Some of us in the past four weeks, we spent over a million naira on our babies and then they throw us out without notice. This is what happens. This is loose. This is federal, the federal government of speech will loose. This is what it looks like. This is where people sleep. Mothers who just had babies. This is where they sleep. This is the situation. This is the situation. This is the current situation. This is the current situation of this country. A country where we are treated like animals in our own homes. So yes, we're taking the fight to those that matter. When we were fighting for NSAS, we didn't know, obviously a lot of people don't understand. The health system in this country has deteriorated. This looks really horrible. But, you know, I think Luz had come out with a statement saying that this lady who recorded the video is looking for some cheap popularity. But it goes to show that there must have been something wrong. It is impossible. This is, you know, we can see what's going on here. It is impossible that women would be sleeping outside the hospital in this state at this point. I, I, I mean, I don't, I, I understand that Luth is, is, you know, worked hard to resolve the issue within 10 minutes, but it should never have happened. Yes, but Luth said it did not happen. They categorically denied it. So I think that Luth should be believed and not this lady who is claiming that these are new mothers. Now, you will know, OG, yes. as well as I, when you've just had a baby, your baby bump is still there. Of course. I was looking at the women pictured here, yeah. lying down. Where is the bump? And according to Luth, it's um, relatives of patients on admission that insist on coming to the hospital with their relatives and sleeping in the hospital with their relatives that have to resort to sleeping outside. Look at that lady in the fuchsia. Where's her baby bump? That is not someone who just had a child. Mm. I'm sorry, it's just not. So it's relatives 
who insist on sleeping in the hospital with their patients. And I know, because recently I had to visit somebody in hospital, in a Gobi hospital, mm -hmm. and her relatives were sleeping there, the lady in the grey dress but, as but well. Is that, her relatives okay. were sleeping there and they were sleeping outside. Luth says, similar to Igbobi, that they are hospitals, they're not hotels. They do not have space in their wards for six four relatives who want to accompany the patient because they love the patient. If you insist on spending the night, then you sleep outside. They can't provide that space for you. So I think it's important. The lady in the video, very upset, clearly, was telling people to share. I want to urge people to be responsible in their use of social media. Mm -hmm. By all means, share. But if you do share, you should have in, in the caption what that this is, is what yes. Luth has said for a balanced view. We don't need to just take one side and run with it. Yes. Okay, I, I like your point, but at the same time, if the relatives want to sleep somewhere, should they be sleeping outside? No, they you? shouldn't, but they should not be spending the night in the hospital with the patients. I know because that if in I've other places baby, that does I not want happen. My family with me. Not to sleep in the hospital with you. Where else does that happen but Nigeria? Well, like my mother I said, slept I with went me. to visit. Well, you pay for that. If you cannot pay for that, then you go home. But some people decide to explore another option, which is staying there for free and they sleep outside. Like I said recently, I went to visit somebody in Nigobia, and that's what happened. Because there's no space in the world, you don't want to pay for the bed, then you sleep outside. It's not to it's, it's bad enough that we have such problems in our health sector. Yes. It's even worse That's to cool. portray Luth in this kind of light, that mothers who just gave birth are being made to sleep outside. Come on now. Point taken. Dr. Abati. Well, ordinarily, I mean, hospitals in Nigeria will tell you that there are visiting hours. Yes. And people that are supposed too. to come during visiting hours. If you have put your person in the care of the uh, hospital, that's why it's called a hospice, a place of care. It's assumed that there are professionals who will look after your person. But because of the nature of the average African, we assume we don't even trust people, you know, the professionals in the hospital. Even when we do not know how to give an injection, yes. we think that it's a show of care to deploy at least one or two members of the family to stay with the uh, patient, yes. whether she's there for maternity re maternal reasons or for any other reason whatsoever. And then the hospital authorities, they are always having this problem. It's not a private hospital. Maybe a private hospital will bend backwards. But we all know how the public health system has been overstretched. They don't even have enough space for patients. Exactly. And then besides, depending on the kind of ailment, it's even risky for people who are otherwise healthy out of an attempt to show love uh, to expose themselves to conditions in the hospital. But I think that, you know, the... Uh, uh, authorities of the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, they still have to do a lot more. Yes. Uh, because no matter what you say, this is not good for their image. And when Professor Chris Bode, that's the name of the chief medical director, when he took over as the CMD of that hospital, he said he was going to ensure 100% uh, proficiency. But they may have their own issues, but they need to uh, continue to keep the uh, standards. Uh, in this particular case, the explanation as Tundu has helped them to articulate, uh, articulate it. Sounds convincing. People do, should not come and stay in the hospital. It's not a hostel. It's not a hotel. If there are neighboring hotels, you can stay there and come during visiting hours to see the person who has been handed over for care. That's one leg of it. The other leg of it, of course, is that the lady who did that video, uh, whether what she has uh, put out there is factual or not, she has also drawn our attention to something within the Nigerian healthcare system. The fact that not enough care is provided for people who go to our hospitals. That's why I thought it was have we important. Not, we have seen yes. videos of some hospitals in some parts of the country where newly born babies, where there are no cribs for them. Yes. And they are put on top of uh, chairs. Yes. And their mothers, you know, uh, sleep on the floor. There are hospitals like that in this country. We have had cases of persons in the absence of health insurance who receive medical care long after, you know, they've recovered. They are detained. Many hospitals are detention centers just because the uh, patient uh, who has already been uh, treated cannot pay something as little as 30,000 naira. Okay? I mean, you can stretch the examples ad infinitum, but the lesson of it all is the fact whether the details in this instance are authentic or not, that the Nigerian government needs to invest more in healthcare. Very good point. Needs to provide more for the health of the citizens. Because you can't have a country 
if you don't have healthy citizens. Yes. You can't really have a country if there is no confidence in the healthcare system and families who have patients in the hospital have to deploy family guards that video to was keep an eye on their yes, people. Yeah, the, 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 the truth is bad enough without yes. a need to exaggerate. Those babies in chairs, we saw those, and those were clearly newborn babies, we can tell. You don't need to add anymore to what is already a complete disaster there in Nigeria's be, healthcare. There must be more investigation to this. Rufa, your take on the story. For me, so I remember I was reading a book called Five Giants, and it was a story of a guy called William Beveridge. And after the Second World War in England, this man called William Beveridge said, people that fought for us in the war shouldn't suffer. So he brought about a plan called the NHS, National Health Insurance Scheme. And the NHS has saved a lot of lives and helped a lot of people. And you wonder why we have not gotten to the point where we have sort of like an NHS. I remember President Lucia Gorbachev tried starting a health insurance scheme that had been fraught with a lot of corruption here and there. And it keeps going on like a, like, like, like a broken record player, I should say. This is an indication that the healthcare system is not working. This is another system we should look at in this country. I know we have Servicom that they're supposed to be able to report to that deals with service in government establishments. I'd like to know, not what Lute is saying about it, I'd like to know if a complaint has been raised to Servicom and what Servicom says about it. Because I know we don't have enough equipment, we don't have enough beds. I've heard that, I know, so I'm, I'm not going to say I've heard, I know the particular gist of how people buy beds, hospital beds how people need to pay extra to be able to get admission beds. I know how many people are on the waiting list, but we don't want to go into all of that. But what it just shows is that we need to invest more in the healthcare system. They started what we call the Federal Medical Centers, FMC. They thought it was going to buffer the gap. Yeah, the FMCs have tried their best, but it's not still good enough. So we need a general holistic thinking. It wouldn't be bad if we declared a state of emergency in the country, but Scratch that, because we've declared a state of emergency on education and other sectors. It's not worked either. Right. But we need to do stra something drastic about health, or else people will start treating malaria in the UK if they've not started already. Right. Five point taken. We'll take another story. The breakdown of the train connecting the federal capital territory with Kaduna State has proven yet again to be unreliable. On Tuesday, the train broke down in the middle of nowhere, and passengers were left stranded until around 2 a.m. Let's take a look. This is 2 a.m. This is 2 a.m. This is the end of the train. What is wrong with the train? This is not happening. This is not happening. No, this one. No, they should tell us that they are not going to be there. 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 Tundu, that gentleman made the perfect point. The train is not working. Why put it on the rail? Now, this is a situation that's terrible and is not being embellished. This is facts. I'm going to treat it as facts, <laughs> yes, frankly. This is actually, those people who are angry are actually a lot stronger than I am. I would be in the corner quivering, praying, because that is a huge security risk. We I all thought. know what goes on in that area. And they were stuck there at 2 a.m., I would have been absolutely terrified. This is completely unfair. Yesterday, we talked about what happened with the Minister of Transport apologizing yes. and saying they have to contact China. And here we go again with the trains. And this is supposedly the safe alternative to traveling by road because the Abuja Kaduna Expressway has become a kidnapper's haven. And look at what these people have been put through. This is so frightening. More than anything else, apart from the massive inconvenience and the upset, I'm just so glad they're all in one piece. Yes, but then you raise that valid point, which is security. Yes, that that's where my mind was. This is so scary. Right now, Dr. Abati. Well, it looks like we have just about two minutes yes, to go. go we ahead. discussed this two days ago. Yes. But the real threat to this, is that, uh, the real aspect of this, is that 
Look, this uh, railway project was meant to reduce the pressure on the roads yes. and provide an alternative for people to be able to travel. And all of us were excited about it. Uh, the railway project uh, was one of those inherited projects by the Buhari administration and one of those areas in which the Buhari administration has shown commitment to continuity. You know, we've been on this since the uh, Obasanjo years, and every government, one after the other, had added to it. But it's very unfortunate that what we are getting in terms of our cooperation uh, with uh, the Chinese uh, is this level of inefficiency and incompetence and frustration. Now, a lot of people are back on the roads, the roads are not safe either uh, because the railway that is supposed to provide an alternative is not providing it. And then also, uh, people now travel by air. People who thought, oh, let me just go by train and go and check out the cost of air travel between, you know, Abuja and parts of the north. One report was uh, quoting close to 100,000 naira, you know, one way I mean, for economy because the railway that is supposed to save people uh, on due cost is also not working. The Minister of uh, Transportation, Minister Amechi, uh, told us that the uh, Nigerian Railway Corporation has been directed to bring in the Chinese, uh, you know, and I said, well, let's keep waiting. So when are these Chinese people going to arrive to come and take care of their broken down train? And what is the agreement about re replacing these locomotives that are perpetually breaking down? You know, so they should hurry up since it looks like without the Chinese, we cannot run a railway system in Nigeria. Uh, Rufai, I'm uh, sorry, I don't think you have, uh, if you want to say something real quick. They're supposed to be new now. They're supposed to be new. Why are they breaking down? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> they, are, they, they are Chinese trains. <laughs> We are told. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, Thank you, Dr. Mati. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Ojiope. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow.